Hi, I'm Gary, Whiskey 4 Echo Echo Yankee, and welcome to my workshop. Uh, today I'm going to uh, install a new input attenuator on my uh, legal limit amplifier, the uh, RF kit.de B26RF2K Plus. Kind of rolls off the tongue, huh? Uh, when I bought the amplifier, I bought it with a 13 dB attenuator option. And I've decided I'd like to actually change that out for a 16 dB attenuator. I'll tell you why as we go along. But uh, since I'm going to do this anyway, I thought, well, why don't I bring you along and show you the process? So this little device right here, where you see the alligator clip leads attached, is the new input attenuator rated at 16 dB. And one way to check, uh, just to uh, see if the uh, unit is uh, operating properly, is to measure from one of the uh, leads, the input lead, uh, to ground and see what the resistance, the DC resistance is. Because what this is, is just a resistive attenuator. And it's nominally 50 ohms. You can see here 52.1. Uh, so that seems to be fine. Let's take a look at the output side. And the uh, output side is reading also nominally 50 ohms, 52.7, on my uh, Beckman uh, digital voltmeter. Here's a close-up view uh, of the attenuator on a different background. The camera didn't like to focus. But you can see it's got the uh, two uh, ground tabs uh, uh, to the left and right, uh, an input uh, connection uh, which is on the bottom, and an output connection which is on the top. Generally, these pads are symmetrical, so it doesn't matter which way you put them in. But uh, the one that's in the amplifier does have the input marked. That's because of the uh, resistors used. There may be higher, higher power resistors on the input side of the attenuator than there are on the output side, which would make sense. Here is the uh, current 13 dB attenuator. Uh, you can see that there's only one of the ground tabs that's connected uh, through that screw. And the uh, input and output uh, connections are made uh, through uh, solder uh, connections to the uh, main PA board. If we zoom out, you can see that that's where it's located. And the LDMOS devices there are in the upper left-hand corner. The whole reason for doing this is that I would like to match the input power required for this amplifier to the input power that's required for my other amplifier, an Elecraft KPA500. The KPA500 nominally requires about 50 watts in to get 500 watts out. At the moment, uh, this amplifier will uh, put rated power output with about 15 watts in. Uh, so if I can double that, 3 dB increase, uh, that'll get me closer to uh, the, the 50 watts required by the Elecraft. Uh, this will uh, ensure that if I'm changing between amplifiers that my I don't have to keep close tabs necessarily on the RF power that I'm driving, that they uh, should be close uh, to each other. Uh, that's how you can damage solid state amplifiers, uh, by overdriving them. So you want to make sure that you uh, keep tabs on the uh, the input level of the uh, amplifier you're using. So I'm going to be using a special desoldering station. Uh, this is a unit, uh, the brand name is Tenma. It was sold by MCM Electronics in the United States. Uh, it has a, a heating uh, element uh, and also a vacuum pump uh, that will allow me to pull the solder off uh, the connections uh, fairly easily and hopefully should give me a, a good uh, a clean connection. You can use solder suckers, the little uh, pneumatic devices, or you can use braid, uh, however you want to, to remove the solder. But since I have the device and it's, it's warming up at the moment, you can see the, the temperature uh, climbing there. Uh, we'll use this one uh, to remove the solder from the existing attenuator. All right, let's see if we can remove some solder.
trying to get good heat transfer through. You can hear the vacuum pump. Let's see if one of my Allen tools here will allow me to take this off. comes and the original is extracted. I was looking for any thermal paste, any thermal conductivity gel on the back of the unit, uh, but there doesn't seem to be any used. All right, I'm going to put this new 16 dB. There may actually be some, some paste or something here on the one side where the Allen screw fits in. I'm seeing some dark colored paste there. It wasn't very solid on the attenuator though. make sure that this is physically clamped down. Okay, snug it up a little bit. Good. And we should be able to move to soldering here shortly. So what I have here to uh, do the soldering is an old uh, Radio Shack 40 watt uh, soldering pencil and I'm using a uh, Kester uh, solder. Uh, it's a uh, type 44 uh, rosin core solder, uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, in diameter. And this should be sufficient to give me enough heat to get this to flow. We'll see. Oh yeah, it seems to be. sure there's enough heat on the, the PC board trace and also on the lead from the attenuator. So that actually completes the installation of the attenuator and uh, now I'm going to button the case back up. We'll take the amplifier back upstairs to the ham shack, uh, fire it up and see how it performs. Okay we're now upstairs in the ham shack and the camera is pointed at my Elecraft KPA 500 amplifier. Uh, it's connected uh, through my antenna genius uh, switch to uh, my 50 ohm dummy load. Uh, the flex uh, radio is set to about 29 watts out. And so if I uh, do push to talk and you watch the amplifier, hello test, hello test, one, two, three, one, two, three, hello test, hello test. So nominally about uh, 500 watts out on the amplifier. So now let's move over to the um, RF kit amplifier. Same power level. Okay, now we're looking at the uh, RF kit, RF 2K plus amplifier, uh, still with uh, 29 watts out. Uh, and if I go to push to talk, hello test, hello test, one, two, three, one, two, three. Uh, on the amplifier, it's indicated about 1,000 watts. On my W2 watt meter, it's indicated about a thousand watts. Uh, so I can run it up higher than this, uh, but this is uh, uh, about double what I was nominally running into the amplifier and it's handling it just fine. Uh, so the attenuator is doing its job. So that's it. Uh, the installation of a new 16 dB input attenuator on my RF kit amplifier, uh, giving me a little bit uh, uh, greater input power or driving the amplifier uh, and as we discussed uh, with the discussion on decibels um, it, a little bit goes a long way 3 dB uh, twice the power 
Uh, and uh, this will actually, though, make me more comfortable uh, with uh, operating the amplifier and not having to watch uh, power levels uh, like a hawk, as I have been in the past. It's not a problem, uh, but uh, it's just something that I wanted to do. Thanks for coming along. See you next time. 73 from Whiskey 4, Echo Echo Yankee.